Hello, my name is Scott Fratcher, captain of the Mariah, a Katana 582 for the last two years. In the last two years we've sailed Mariah from New Zealand to the Tuamotos, which is about 2,000 miles upwind, and back to Tonga, which is maybe 1,500 miles back downwind, and then back upwind to Tahiti again, and that's kind of where we're stationed right now. And I want to talk to you about sailing a Katana 582, and kind of I guess some of the strong points and maybe some of the uh, some of the benefits of big cat sailing and one of the ways I, I plan to do that is to show you some video clips of riding downwind and 40 knots of wind that we we did for a few days on end and and I, I kinda want you to see what what it's like inside the boat and what the seaway is like and one of the reasons for this is that most of the time people don't get to experience such conditions and we probably wouldn't have either except we were on a timeline and some of the people that were on board the the crew they they really want to know what a big cat was like for rough weather sailing they had done a lot of sailing on big mono hulls incidentally like a katana 582 a 58 foot catamaran might be equal to something between 80 and 85 foot in a mono hull and that's the kind of boat that our friends had been sailing when they decided to come with us to, to deliver this catamaran from French Polynesia to, to Tonga. And when they saw on the weather charts uh, a deep low was, was going to intersect us, and we were sitting in port, of course, and didn't have to leave, but we made the decision, Let, let's go on out and see what this boat would do in, in 40 knots of wind and what would, in big seas, you know, it's southern hemisphere sailing, there's the possibility of, of uh, well long breaking waves and what would this boat do in, in situations like that so so we made the decision and, and we departed and uh, these are I'll show you the last few photos here of the interior so obviously it's a very comfortable boat as lots of catamarans are but you know we're gonna we're gonna take a look now and see what what the what the boat looks like not sailing like this on calm sea conditions as you would but here we go this is this is probably about 40 knots of wind over the sea right there, and boat's probably doing about 10 knots. That's our looking back uh, at the stern uh, at a wake right there. You can see right now we're just launching off of a wave and accelerating downhill. And uh, there's our apparent wind right there, 30, 30 some knots, 31 knots, and the boat's doing probably about 10 knots. And so, so what we have is 40 knots over the water. 30 knots over the deck of the boat, 10 knots, uh, 10 knots of boat speed, and uh, that's that's probably quite a uh, quite a rare situation right there. In today's world with weather forecasting, you'd, you'd probably you could you could do a complete circumnavigation and never get into conditions like this. You'd see it coming on the weather chart, and you'd move out of the way or or drive a different direction, or, or you'd choose a spot. We chose to go into into these conditions right here, and so. So I don't want you to, to kind of feel scared or think that this is what typical sailing is like, but I do want you to kind of feel the experience. You see that sail up there? That's a, uh, a triple reef mainsail, and uh, we're broad reaching in these conditions. And we could probably um, uh, we could probably shake a reef if we wanted to and be, be running a double reef mainsail. But we wouldn't want to do that. The boat would probably accelerate from maybe running at 10 knots, would probably get up there to about, uh, probably accelerate up, and would probably be doing 12 and 14s. And 10 knots is really comfortable. You're, you're, you're going along, you're making two, over 200 miles a day, a little less than 250, and so you're kind of balancing along two and a quarter, something like that. I don't know if you just notice it. Watch this breaking wave right here. This is, these are, uh, um, well, these are real seaways right here. You've got to remember that all these photographs and this video is being taken from about 12 feet off the water. So, so there, uh, um, that was a pretty good acceleration right there. Oh, <laughs> look at this one. <laughs> yeah. Now, on many boats, you know, you'd be like, uh, I guess you'd say that you'd be uh, holding on tight in conditions like this. And in a few minutes, we'll show you what uh, we'll show you what life is like down below. You can see the size of these waves, how long those. You know, it's always tough to look at a computer screen and and get an idea of how big the seas are. But you can see how long it took that sea to work its way underneath the boat, and that that kind of gives you an idea of uh, of how big the seas are. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. Fantabulous night to make romance. So here we are down below. 
And uh, there's Allison, and, uh, and she's setting up for cooking. You'll notice she's not strapped in, and uh, nothing is really tied down. There's somebody else walking over with the cookbook, taking a look. And uh, uh, you might even, like, if you looked at these photos, you know, you might think that we're just sitting in port. But you look out the window right there. There's a breaking wave going by, and check out that GPS. What are, what are we doing there? We are doing 9-9, nine, nine, 10 knots, 9-8, nine, 9-7. Nine, nine six nine five now I want you to notice the rate at which the GPS is changing speed right there we just went from nine five and we're coming up to we just went up to ten two this is one of the reasons that you don't want that I don't want a really really light catamaran because that speed will change from let's say at the bottom when you're in the bottom of the uh, the wave in the trough you might be doing eight knots and you'll accelerate to let's say fourteen and you hear a lot of people talk about this. Oh, we came off the wave. We were doing 16 knots, and it's it's like a good thing that they that they discuss. And it is a good thing if you're racing around the buoys. But when you're crossing an ocean, and this is going to go on for days on end, then we don't. I don't want my body to accelerate and decelerate, and accelerate and decelerate. That tires me out. And so I don't know if you saw the uh, the look or the the rate of change on that GPS. It was quite slow. And what that means is that it's a very steady boat. It means you can set down a cup of coffee. It means you can stand in one place and and not get thrown all over the boat. That's why that's why nobody is uh, that's why nobody's strapped in in the galley because yes, the boat's doing ten knots. Sure, she's covering two hundred and twenty-five miles in a day in these rough conditions, but it's not throwing the people around. It's not throwing the human cargo around if you will. Look at the size of those waves. Man, I could walk it. <laughs> I'll tell you, I could just sit there all day. But instead, we made landfall and here's Pete to, uh, to wrap it all up. <laughs> You can see more at yachtwork.com or multihullcompany.com. That's yachtwork.com and multihullcompany.com. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars above in your eyes.